Right, a few days ago my Chinese Mini lathe developed another serious fault in the speed control um, circuit board. This is the second one I've had. Um, before anyone says it's cheap Chinese electronics, it's not. This is a KB electronics board and it's made in the USA. I've had two of them so far. They're £90 each, so they're very expensive. I've had loads of problems with the potentiometer on the Chinese mini lathe. You have to buy a special one for this lathe uh, if you have this um, type of control board. And um, they're not cheap either. They're about um, £12 each. Um, I did go over to another type which I converted and I did a, a video on that which is some um, lower cost and a better a potentiometer. But like I say, I cannot continue buying circuit boards um, at that expense. So what I've done to get my lathe going again and completely eliminate all these problems um, forever is to convert my lathe over to belt drive using another motor. And at the moment I've just used an ordinary single phase motor but at a later date I'm going to go over to a three phase motor with a variable frequency drive inverter. And I can get a nice new three phase motor on eBay, brand new, for the cost of one of these. And I like three phase motors because they're much more efficient, they're easier to wire up to get reverse and with the frequency drive I'll have my speed control. And now I'll show a very simple device um, which can actually drive the spindle from the motor. Very quick and easy to make and if you have problems like I've had you might um, consider um, converting over. Like I say one of these is the same price as a three-phase motor but on this um, setup I'm going to show you, you can use any motor you like within reason or you might just um, consider changing over to three phase motor anyway for efficiency um, but one thing I would actually suggest if you have the Chinese mini lathe with this circuitry and it's working I would actually suggest making up one of the devices I'm about to show just in case um, one day you may not be able to afford one of these or um, they become unavailable you'll be able to quickly um, take that component and uh, convert the lathe over very easily and keep your lathe running. And it will be a minimal amount of cost to do so. And the benefits of converting the lathe are absolutely incredible. I wish I'd done this a long time ago before I actually bought the second um, circuit board. And when you see the quality of the variable frequency drive inverters and the three phase motors which I hope to um, show in the future, you won't want to mess about with this um, type of stuff again. Right, the mini lathe is dead easy to convert over to belt drive um, simply by making one um, easily machined adapter. And that adapter is this one here in the back of the spindle. It's just an expanding mandrel. Um, to accept whatever pulleys you're going to use. And it's made out of a length of bright mild steel. This end here is turned to a very close tolerance to the uh, bore of the spindle. I've drilled it through to accept 8mm studding. So that one pushes through nice. I've bored a cone in the end here 
and I've done it with a two millimeter slitting saw both ways to a certain depth and then extended those um, uh, slots with a um, end mill so it makes it very easy to expand with little effort. I turned the brass cone to suit the internal angle and Loctite did that on the studding with um, Loctite 638. That one goes in there like that. A couple of washers on the back and the 8mm nut is used to draw that into the mandrel, expand it and lock it rock solid um, inside the spindle. This end is obviously turned to whatever size of pulley um, you'll be using and I've milled a flat down the full length of that um, for the grub screws to lock onto so it doesn't actually damage the diameter. And I made that um, pulley end nice and long so it actually sticks out quite away from the back of the lathe to make it more versatile when mounting a motor. Um, I wanted to have the opportunity of actually mounting the motor this way round or the other way round when I get my um, three phase. I'm not sure how big the actual motor is and how much room I'm going to have so I might have to put it that way round. And the end that goes into the spindle is about um, 56 millimeter deep up to a shoulder um, so when the pulleys are set on this end Whenever it's put back into the um, spindle, it will only go to a certain depth and the uh, belt will always be in alignment. So it's very quick to remove to get at the screw cut gears to change them and put back in place without any alignment adjustment. And on tightening the nut at the back, I only have to use very little effort to make it lock rock solid in the spindle. And then put the belt back on, the right way round obviously. And the machine is ready to go. And you can get these nylon or composite belts on eBay um, for a very reasonable price. Um, they do run a bit noisier than the ordinary rubber V-belts, but I'm not bothered by that. You can make them to whatever length you like, and I actually think the best um, uh, link belt like this is the Fenner belt made in the USA, and I've got one of those on my MyFed ML7. So at the moment, the motor I have on the back here is one that I've actually um, taken off my woodwork lathe um, just for a temporary measure, just to get the lathe going again. It's a single phase um, 320 watt um, motor. I haven't got reverse and I'm not going to try and wire it up for reverse because I'm going to put this one back on my woodwork lathe as soon as I've got my three phase motor. And it's simply um, bolted onto the back of the bench with a couple of pieces of um, angle iron that are back to back um, to give it a bit of strength. I had this bracket here in my um, bits of metal that I keep and um, that one made a good um, pivot system or a locking system. The um, Mode has uh, one pivot point which um, I just bolted onto that angle arm with an 8mm bolt and then I've made this um, assembly here which I can actually bring the motor forward for slackening the belt and then locking up again. And that's um, one of the things that I really like about this setup is that I'm not actually restricted to the use of um, one type of motor. And on the motor you can see that I've fitted a pulley with four speeds. I'm only using two of those um, which suit the uh, larger ones on the spindle. The large one is a five inch pulley and this one produces a speed of 540 rpm and the smaller one uh, produces a speed of 860. 
and those speeds are ideal for me as a temporary measure until I get my three phase with full speed control again. Um, when I had my speed control on the lathe I found that for most machining operations that I did on this lathe I was always around um, 7 or 800 RPM. Also I haven't wired up the emergency stop and on off switch um, until I get my uh, three phase motor I'm going to just use the one off my woodwork lathe again. So there's one small downside to this setup which I'm not actually bothered about and that is because the mandrel's in the spindle you haven't got the through bore through that spindle for using long bar. And the reason I'm not bothered by that at all is the actual benefits of this setup greatly outweigh that. And that is no more complicated, expensive electronics that keep going wrong. No more changeover gears that are noisy and hard to get to to lubricate. No need for a gear selector. The versatility of being able to choose a motor that I want to use. The ease of maintenance of the spindle bearings now. Um, because I haven't got the lower shaft or the gears, the selector, the electronics, um, the back um, electronic part. I can actually strip this machine down in a matter of minutes. Just take out the um, mandrel at the back, the guards off and um, the actual screw cut um, gear assembly at the back there. I can just undo the four bolts on the underside of the headstock and that one will lift off and I can actually get straight to those bearings. I can actually take the spindle out because I have my um, tapered roller bearings which I fitted some time ago, the heavy duty ones. So that all comes out very quickly and I can clean the bearings now very quickly and re-lubricate them. So it's very easy to maintain. Another great thing I can do with it now if I want to is that I can actually set up a cutting oil or coolant system. Because I haven't got a motor under the ways here or electronics within the close vicinity of the working area, I can actually um, set that one up without fear of actually getting the coolant in the motor. And that's another thing, um, when I had the motor in there, it was very difficult to actually keep swarf out of it. Having the motor out the back there now will keep that nice and clean. And lastly, one of the best benefits of all is the actual power torque this setup produces. And this is the best torque I've ever seen on a lathe of this type. I reckon it produces the same sort of torque as my MyFit ML7. So after completing this setup, it's one of those um, things that I wish I had thought about many years ago. Saved myself a lot of money on um, failed electronics. And with all the upgrades I've completed on the mechanical side of the lathe, this has made it into a really excellent machine. And at some point I hope to show how easy it is to make this um, spindle mandrel on the lathe. And um, if you want to you can actually convert your machine over and have all the benefits that I've shown in this video. If you have a broken down machine um, you might be able to get someone to make one of these mandrels up and actually get your lathe going again very easily. But in any case, it's worth making one of these mandrels up um, just in case you need it in the future.